Hello everybody and welcome to my lecture on visualization of graphs. I'm Philipp Kindermann, I'm the new professor here at University of Trier for algorithms and I'm very happy that I can give you this new lecture for the master courses that doesn't exist so far since visualization of graphs is also the topic that I'm working the most on. Unfortunately, because of Corona, we have to do all the lecture online, so I will use the same style that I used the last two semesters at other universities, and in this lecture I will give you pre-recorded videos. In the first lecture, I will give you an overview over the topics that we want to have a look at. I will briefly talk about the organizational part of the lecture first, then we will define the graph visualization problem, we will refresh our knowledge about graphs in general and about planar graphs, and we will have our very first drawing algorithms for trees. As you can see, the lectures are pre-recorded videos, and the plan is that every week, one week before the lecture meeting, I will release the videos here on YouTube, and you have a whole week to watch them at your own pace. Then, during the meeting, which is on Tuesday from 8.30 to 10 a.m., and happens in big blue button, which you can access via the Moodle page, you can ask me questions. So when you watch a video, you should try to understand everything. You should pause whenever you don't understand something, try to figure it out, maybe read something about it, and then make notes of things that you could not understand. And then during this meeting, you can ask me any questions. If you don't have questions or we are done with questions, then I can also ask some questions to you or I can tell you something more about other things that I didn't have the time to put into the slides. So the goal is that we can have a discussion going on here that not only I'm talking to you, but we are all talking together and trying to figure out things together. In the videos, sometimes I will also give tasks to you or questions to you. Then I usually show that by the question mark like this one here. And then you should pause the video. You should try to figure things out yourself. And only when you're done and you found the solution or you're sure that you cannot find it and you're frustrated maybe, then you continue. You will see an explanation mark like this one. And I will give you the answer. Please really stop at those points. Try to think about it yourself and only continue after you're done thinking it. Don't just continue the video, look at the solution and then think, yeah, I could have figured it out myself. It helps you a lot trying to find the solutions yourself. There are also tutorials. I will give you one sheet per lecture. As for the schedule, we always have the lecture meeting on Tuesday. So currently we are here and the first meeting will be next Tuesday. This is where we have the discussion. So you will get the videos one week before, then we discuss them. And one week later, before the next discussion, you have to hand in the exercise sheet. Then I will grade it. And at some point here, we will have a tutorial meeting and we will discuss the solutions. The second lecture happens like this. Next week we release the video. In two weeks we discuss it, and in three weeks you hand in the solutions, and so on. You should submit the solutions online, also in the Moodle system, and I recommend that you write the solutions in LaTeX. I will provide a template to you that you can use to make things a bit easier. Of course you can also just handwrite it and scan it and upload it, but I think it's a bit nicer if I get everything written in LaTeX. It's easier to read for me, and it also helps you a lot, because you will need LaTeX a lot. We will have the discussions and solutions, like I said here, at some point in this time frame. We don't have a slot yet for the tutorials, because all the slots of the weeks are blocked by some other course. But since there are not too many participants, I'm sure we can find some slot where everybody has time and where we can talk about the solutions and also about the next sheet. During the first lecture meeting, we will discuss this and then fix the date and time for our meetings. There are four books that are interesting, which are these four here. Most of the lecture is based on the first book, Graph Drawing Algorithms for the Visualization of Graphs by Diet Batista, Eats, Tamasia and Tollas. The a newer version is basically this one, The Handbook of Graph Drawing and Visualization, which is edited by Tamasia, but every chapter is written by a different set of co-authors. And that also contains a few more modern things that didn't really exist in 1998 yet. On the Moodle page, I will write for every lecture also which chapters of these books 
talk about the same topic. So for example, I will write GD chapter 5, and then if you want to know more about the algorithm that we talked about, you can look into this book, look in chapter 5, and then you will find something. None of these books are required. This is just additional information or maybe some different explanations that work better for you than what I'm telling you. So you're not required to get any of these books. This book here is completely free on this website and I'm sure you can also find these on the library, but I haven't checked yet. If you need help, just come to me and ask me and we will find a solution. So what is this course about? The main goal is that I want to give you an overview on the topic of graph visualization. This is a very active research field. There's a conference every year only about this problem, and there are many people that are working on it. And it's one of my favorite topics in computer science at all. So I want to share my enthusiasm about it. I want to share my love for graph visualization with you and introduce to you the many topics that you can have there. And it has so much that is still unexplored. And with this introduction, maybe you get interested in it, you want to work on it, maybe you want to write a master thesis about it, and I would be very happy to supervise you a bit. We want to improve our knowledge of modeling and solving problems via graph algorithms. Many of you probably haven't used many graph algorithms so far to solve problems, so we want to learn how to do that. The visualization problem in general is just, we have some graph and we want to visualize it with some drawing. That's the whole basis of this course. So give me some graph and I have to draw it. The question is always, how do we draw it? And this is not so clear. There are many, many different styles. There are many things you want to do. And we want to have a look at 10, 11, 12 of them in this course. So we want to reduce this visualization problem to the algorithmic core. This is what we want to do. We have some graph class, so some specific graphs. We have some layout style. And then we want to find an algorithm that draws this graph class with this layout style. And when we have this algorithm, we want to analyze it. How good is it? So what properties does the drawing have? We want to model things. We want to have a look at the data structures that we can use. And we want to make use of different styles of algorithms. For example, divide and conquer or incremental algorithms. We want to make use of combinatorial optimization, which is more mathematical. For example, we want to use flows or ILPs. And we also want to use physics-based approaches, like force-based algorithms. If you don't know what these things are, that's not a problem. I will introduce it to you when we get there. And also a very important part for us is that we want to have proofs. Whenever we want to do something, we want to prove some properties, how good it is, how much space do we need, how close do we get to the style that we want, things like that. So it's still quite mathematical. We want to have formal proofs and we want to have objective measurements of our drawings. These are the topics that I chose that I want to talk about. This is still subject to change, but I think the list in the end will be very close to this. So we want to start with drawing very simple graphs, just trees and serious parallel graphs. Then we have a series of three lectures about straight line drawings. And we will move on to more specific drawing styles later. So orthogonal, you can only have horizontal and vertical edges. Octilinear, you can also have diagonal. In upwards planar drawings, all the edges have to be directed upwards. In hierarchical layouts, you have a bunch of things that you want to do, and you have a whole pipeline of algorithms that you need to solve this to get your hierarchies. We want to have a look at different styles of representations, like contact and visibility representations. We want to have a look at how many crossings we need in any drawing. And we want to have a look at graph classes that cannot be drawn crossing free, but maybe have some specific properties, like every edge can only be crossed once. In the next part, we will try to formally define what the layout problem is and have a look at a few examples of graph drawing.